video, we'll show you the second method for simplifying complex fractions. Remember, a complex fraction is a fraction divided by another fraction. Now, this second method is going to be this. We're going to find a common denominator for the whole fraction and then multiply on the top and the bottom by that common denominator. And this is how it works. Take our first example from the other video, 1 half over 3 fourths. Look at just this denominator and this denominator. Well, a common denominator for 2 and 4 is 4. So we're going to multiply on the top by 4 and on the bottom by 4. Now what you do from here is your choice. What I think is easiest is just to cancel. 2 goes into 4 twice. And that's all I get is a plain old 2 in the top. 4 goes into 4, cancels totally out, and we just get 3, and we're finished. Now that was a very easy example because it was just numerical. Now your other choice on this is if you don't want to do the canceling, you can think of 4 as 4 over 1, and this becomes 4 over 2 over, think about this as 4 over 1, 4 times 3 is 12 over 4, and you're thinking, well, that doesn't look a whole lot better than this, but it is because 4 divided by 2 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. I think the canceling is a little bit easier, but sometimes you're going to want to do this, especially when we get into the more complicated polynomial examples. On this one with the polynomials, we have a monomial y squared in the denominator and a monomial 7y. When you are naming the common denominator for these two monomials, of course you have to take the coefficient of 7, but the rule for variables is you take the highest power that's there. It sounds strange, you're looking for the least common denominator, but you take the highest power that's there. So this is the common denominator. I like to do the canceling from here, so y squared cancels totally with y squared. All you have to do is multiply 7 times 3x, which was 21x. In the bottom, the 7s cancel out y squared over y using your exponent laws, you know, keep the base and subtract, it's going to leave me with a y in the top, nothing in the bottom. 12x times y is 12xy. Now, I have got to do a little bit of simplifying here. Just because we've done this does not mean we're automatically finished. With this, I notice there's an x in the top and an x in the bottom. I can just cancel those out. And with the 21 and the 12, I can divide top and bottom by 3, so this is a 7 in the top and a 4y in the denominator. This one is just a little more complicated. Because we have these negative exponents, you have to remember that this creates the fraction. x to the negative 1 is 1 over x. y to the negative 1 is 1 over y. So that's what this slide shows. Notice we didn't do anything to the top because that's not a fraction. What I have to think about now is what my common denominator is. Well, I have a denominator of x, a denominator of y, the common denominator is the product x times y. What I need to do is multiply xy times everything, but I choose not to distribute the top because there's nothing that's going to cancel for me. I would rather just write it as xy times the quantity x plus y. So that's the top. On the bottom, I'm going to write this as xy over x because I'm distributing this and I'm going to distribute this. So this will be plus xy over y. The top is staying exactly as is, xy times x plus y, but on the bottom I got some canceling. x cancels with x, just leaves y. Over here, y cancels with y, just leaves x. Now, x plus y and y plus x are identical binomials. I can cancel those out, and I'm just left with xy. Now, back over here, if you're pretty good with fractions and canceling, you could do a little bit in your head rather than writing this down. I look at this and I see an x on the bottom and x in the top, so I know this x is going to cancel with this x, so that, pretend that's gone. All that's left is y times 1. Over here, I'm going to get rid of this y with that y, so that's gone and that's gone, but of course the x is still there. 1 times x is x. So that is the same thing I got by doing these steps over here. So if you are pretty decent with canceling your fractions like that, then go ahead and do that. But if you need to write out your distributing, then do that. All right, let's take a look at this and think about what the common denominator is. A common mistake is for people to look at this and say, well, there's an x, so x plus 3 must be my common denominator. Not true. For x to be a factor of x plus 3, it means it must divide evenly into x plus 3, and it does not. So the least common denominator is the product of that monomial 
times that binomial. So I'm going to multiply on the top and bottom by x times x plus 3. That means I have to distribute, I have to multiply four separate times. And this is what I get. Looks kind of busy, but this is what's happening. This times 1 stays x times x plus 3 over that denominator of x plus 3. This times 1 is just x times x plus 3 over the denominator of x. When I distribute here, there is no denominator. It's just x times x plus 3. Here I have to do 3 times x times the binomial gives me this. And now I can look here and do some canceling out. So x plus 3s cancel, x's cancel, nothing canceling here, and the x's cancel. So that's all of the little individual fraction canceling I can do. Once I do that canceling, what I'm left with now is x, that's my x, minus the parentheses x plus 3 over x times x plus 3, which is right there. And then since those x's canceled out, I have 3 times that quantity. Now this needs to be cleaned up. We can distribute the negative through the top. On the bottom, I just multiplied. x times x plus 3 gives me this. Distribute the 3 gives me 3x plus 9. I can cancel out those x's. I can put some like terms together. And I end up with negative 3, because that canceled out. Those went together over x squared plus 6x plus 9, which is not wrong. However, you might notice that x squared plus 6x plus 9 factors, and you could write it as x plus 3 squared. The reason I went ahead and wrote it like this is because this is the form our answer was for this same problem on the other video when I used method 1. Now go back a second, like I've talked before. If you're pretty good with your canceling, you don't have to do all this rewriting. Take a look x plus 3 is going to cancel with that x plus 3. So all it is is x times 1 is x. Over here, x is going to cancel out with that x. I'm going to have to have minus parentheses x plus 3. On the bottom, that times that 1, there's nothing to cancel. I have x times x plus 3. But here the x is cancel, and I can do 3 times that. Which brings me to right there. It's just a matter of if you can do the canceling in your head, this avoids having to write all of this out. Here we have a lot of negative exponents, so we need to rewrite x to the negative 1 becomes 1 over x. This becomes 1 over y. These two become 1 over x squared, and this is 1 over y squared. So this is what it looks like on that first step with the fractions. Now get your common denominator, which is x squared y squared because our rule is take the highest power that's there. So that's what we're going to multiply by. Distribute, of course, x squared y squared times 1 is just x squared y squared. It just has a different denominator. Same thing on the bottom. And now we can think about some canceling. x squared over x, that x goes away, and I'm just left with an x here. Same thing happens here with the y's, and I'm left with a y in the top. On the bottom here, the x squared totally cancels, y squared totally cancels. So that Cleaning this up, x times that y squared is xy squared, x squared times y, and the bottom is just y squared minus x squared. Now you might think you're finished, but you're not. Remember back to rational expressions, you need to factor the top and the bottom to see if something might cancel. In the top, all I can do is take out a common factor of xy. When I do that, I'm left with y plus x in the top here. The bottom is the difference of two squares, which is y plus x, y minus x. y, y plus x, y plus x are identical binomials. We may cancel them out and we're left with xy over y minus x. I want to say one last thing about canceling. You don't really have to do the canceling in your head. Now, this is the same problem we just finished up with a second ago. We've said that the common denominator is x squared y squared. And I'm saying instead of drawing the parentheses and just writing x squared y squared out here one time and then trying to distribute in your head, another option is for us to write x squared y squared times each one of these terms individually. It takes a little more writing, but this is what it looks like. We're going to multiply everything times x squared y squared. The benefit of doing this is that when you do your canceling now, you don't have to do it in your head. You can look and see, okay, x, with this x squared, I'm just going to have an x. So this little part right here becomes x y squared. Over here, same kind of thing. The y with the y squared leaves me a y gives me x squared y. On the bottom, x squared with x squared gives us y squared minus the y squareds cancel x squared. And then this finishes up the same way we finished.